Hey, this is Dennis with Cybercraft. Let's go ahead and do another performance-based question for Security Plus. Let's jump right into this one, uh, see what we have here. So you receive a support ticket from one of your users. The ticket reads the following, or states the following. I logged on this morning and opened Outlook to send an email. I was, write, I was writing the email. My computer started to run really slowly. Text was appearing a few seconds after I typed. I didn't know what was wrong. I managed to send the email, but I thought I broke something, so I shut down the laptop and made a ticket. Okay, so this is a user ticket, and we start. You start the computer, run Task Manager. You're presented with the following. Okay, so we have uh, Task Manager view here, and it looks like here we have the memory usage is pretty high, so it's about 90% or more, I think, 15 point, yeah, 15.8 gigabytes has 16. So pretty high memory usage. Let's look at the other CPU usage looks pretty normal. Disk usage looks fine. Why are there so many Wi-Fi adapters? <laughs> okay, but we do see the memory usage being really high. So what is it asking us? All right, what is the most likely cause of result seeing the task manager? All right, so based on this task manager result, we know it's going to be something that affects memory usage. So let's see. Use, a Trojan has infected the user machine and it's using the RAM. Okay, that's, that's possible. Yeah, that's definitely something that could be happening here. The user has too many programs running. That could also be a cause, but that would probably affect the CPU usage a little more. And it doesn't, it doesn't really say that she's, or he, whoever is using the, a uh, lot of programs here. It just said that the user was using Outlook. A fileless virus has infected the user's machine. That's an interesting one. Fileless virus. A fileless virus embeds itself in computer memory, like RAM. So that might be what we want to pick here. Because a fileless virus doesn't rely on memory sectors or, you know, like file systems to operate. It embeds itself in the RAM. And usually one of the indicators of a fileless virus is high RAM usage, which would be memory usage. So that might be it here. Uh, a user's machine is infected with crypto malware. Okay. I know it's not crypto malware here. Crypto malware is going to be affecting the GPU, the graphical processing unit, which we don't get to see here and the CPU because it wants to run cryptocurrency. So I think of all these, I mean, these three could be possible causes here, but it's either going to be this one or this one. And let's see if there's any indications of a Trojan. So it says, okay, she op they open Outlook to send an email. Does it say she or he? I don't think it says anything like that. Okay, so... Now, because they're using Outlook, does that mean that the user that the user opened an email here? You're writing an email, computer started to run really slowly. Now, if the user opened an email, maybe it'd be a Trojan. We don't see anything about that. So I think the most, most likely cause here would be the file as virus, but it could... This is also a very good answer. I just don't see anything in the question tells us it's a Trojan. If this happened after the user opened an email, then I think it would be a Trojan. But I think I'm going to stick with fileless virus. Okay, what is the best way to remediate this issue? How do we fix it? Okay. Run an antivirus scan on the computer. Reinstall the OS using a disk image. Remove excess programs and features. Isolate the machine from the network. Okay, so I guess this depends on what we answered here. So since we think it's a fileless virus, uh, fileless virus isn't going to be fixed usually by doing an antivirus scan. An antivirus scan is probably going to be, it's very difficult to find and fix a fileless virus. And it's very easy for fileless viruses to usually to avoid anti malware antivirus programs. So I don't think an antivirus scan is going to work. Reinstall the OS using a disk image. 
That, I mean, that would definitely solve it. I don't know if we want to go that far, maybe. Remove excess programs and features. That, I think that relates to if we thought the user had too many programs running. And isolate the machine from the network. That wouldn't really do anything for a fileless virus or, I mean, that would work for crypto malware. So I guess these, this is contingent on if we thought it was crypto malware for this last one. I think if it's fileless virus, we should go with this one. Reinstall using a disk image because an antivirus scan is going to work and none of the, these aren't going to address it either. So this would be the best, the best way. That's a little tricky. Let's see. Okay, this is something different. You address another user submitted ticket. I was using the program management software and my computer was acting very slowly. Everything was really jittery and unresponsive. I don't know what I did wrong. It's from the user perspective. So when we investigate the targeted computer, we see the following in the task manager. Processes. And what process is highlighted here? So we have Chrome, a lot of uses of Chrome, and then one use of Chrome here that's using a fair bit of memory, oh, but 98% of the CPU. Okay, so so that, that instance of Chrome, I, I mean, Chrome is pretty, you know, process heavy. Usually it, it eats up a lot of RAM, but it doesn't usually eat up 98% of your CPU. Uh, so I, I think this is probably not an instance of Chrome just based on this screenshot. So if it's using up CPU, it's probably going to be some sort of malware that eats up CPU time, eats up CPU processes. So let's see, a worm. A worm is a virus that replicates itself over a network. That's really not possibly a worm, but I don't think so. Crypto, this is probably it here. Crypto malware, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I'm not going to, let's read the rest of these. Remote access Trojan. Now that's an interesting one. Remote access Trojans will mimic normal network behavior, but remote access Trojans are designed to be a backdoor. So they really try and stay, stay uh, stealthy. They a remote access Trojan does not want to draw a lot of attentions to itself, and this will definitely do that. So it's definitely not a remote access Trojan. Now, it could possibly be adware in a browser, but that wouldn't really eat up so much CPU time. Adware is usually designed to get you to you know, click on certain ads or navigate to a place where you might... It's, it's a way to scam users who aren't very competent with computer systems. I don't think it'd be spyware either. Spyware also wants to be pretty um, subtle in its approach. So I think crypto malware makes the most sense. Crypto malware uses CPU cycles, uses GPU cycles to mine cryptocurrency. And I think I just mentioned that in the previous case there. So crypto malware, I think it's, is probably what we're going for here. You're doing drag and drop here. Match the type of malware with its definition, okay? All right, a type of malware that replicates itself over a network. I think I just mentioned this is a worm. So do we have worm on here? Worm, okay. Type of malware replicates itself over a network. Put that there. All right. Uh, I'm just going to read these without looking at the bottom first. Just so I have an, a sense, I try and define it myself. And I would recommend doing that if you're given the definitions to find them in your head before looking at the given answers. Because given answers will usually try and mislead you. So if you can define it in your head first, then you can usually pick the right thing. All right, enabled, enables a backdoor on the target machine and mimics regular re network traffic. Enables a backdoor, that's gonna be some sort of backdoor generating malware, mode access trojan, that would be a good, a good bet there. Mode access trojan. All right, designed to mine cryptocurrency like Ethereum or Bitcoin, and oftentimes it's mining Ethereum anymore. So I, this is going to be crypto malware. We just mentioned that. A virus that embeds itself in RAM. That's the fileless virus. And we see fileless virus there. A virus that depends on Microsoft Office programs. That's going to be a macro virus. Virus, macro virus. All right, great. And then a self-replicating malware, that could be 
lots of things. Okay, that could be a virus. Yeah, a virus is a self-replicating malware, and that could be multiple types of malware, uh, multiple types of virus. A worm is a type of virus that replicates over a network. So this would, since we have worm here, this would be what we'd put in for virus for sure, because this specifies that it's over a network, so that makes it worm. Okay, there's some tricky ones in here. I'm curious to see if I think this is correct that we had fileless virus and then reinstalled disk image, but we'll find out here. This is a pretty good question my team came up with, so let's go ahead and, and try see how we did here. Okay, hey, we got them all right here. So that's great. Let's take a look here. See if, what the explanations are. So this one, fileless virus. Fileless virus embeds itself in the RAM. It can usually lead to high RAM usage on a computer. All right, while a type of virus can be installed using a Trojan, there's no information presented that indicates that this was a Trojan. You just started the computer, so it's unlikely this, the simple program uses you the, the cause. Use your too many programs running, especially since there is a drastic sudden jump in RAM usage. That's, that's a good point there. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, reinstall the OS using a disk image. File of virus is difficult to detect and remove using antivirus tools. If you've ever had to work or eliminate a file of virus, it is very tricky. And they, they are very tough to identify because they don't rely on anything in the file system. There's no file you can just delete on your disk to get rid of it. You have to... You know, a disk image is usually the best best course of action there. And this is crypto malware. Crypto malware high CPU usage indicates that this is most likely crypto malware, and that's the the key indicator here in this question. So that's good. All right, and we got all the drag and drops correct there. Pretty good. Well, I think that was a pretty good question. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you think this should this should be a little different. Um, but I think this is a pretty good representation of what you'd see on the test. And that's what I'm trying to do here with the new format that we have. Make these very similar to what you'd really see on the test. You might actually be asked to use Task Manager or interpret some usage statistics, some uh, outputs from Performance Monitor or Task Manager to determine a type of malware or investigate malware usage on a computer. So that's the goal. But I really appreciate you joining me today. Thanks so much for joining in. And if you're interested in any training, check out the links in the description. Check out our training courses. Thanks so much for joining in. Have a wonderful day.